Welcome to Jumpstart Your Joy. I'm your host, Paula Jenkins. I invite you to join me as we explore how inspiring people have chosen joy in their lives and what they have to share with us about how to jumpstart joy in the world. Plus, how do we follow our own hearts, find work that lights us up while mindfully noticing the role that joy plays in our own journey. Welcome to episode 100. This is Paula Jenkins, the host of Jumpstart Your Joy. This week, I'm celebrating hitting episode 100. And to do so, I'm chatting with Julie Houghton and Liz Applegate about life as entrepreneurs. We are all coaches and graduated from the same coaching certification program two years ago. The three of us are in a mastermind and we chat daily and we've all become very, very close. This week, we look back at the last two years about what's changed and shifted in our lives, about what we've been challenged by the most, the growth we've experienced, and what surprised us the most about being entrepreneurs. I am so honored to have them both on the show for episode 100. It is just a treat to get to talk to my two dear friends. Before we get to the interview and all of the fun, I am so glad that you are here. Thank you for tuning in this week and for joining me, and thank you so much for all of your support over the last two years. To help celebrate this big milestone, I have a question. Would you tell someone you know about Jumpstart Your Joy, the podcast? If you know someone who is just starting out on the entrepreneurial journey, or if you know someone that's following their own dreams, please share this conversation with them and maybe it will inspire them to create a mastermind or join you in a mastermind. I publish show notes for each episode that include links to the guests' websites, additional references, and some of my thoughts about the topics that we discuss. You can find them all here along with links to Julie and Liz's websites at jumpstartyourjoy.com slash episode 100. While you're over at the site, I invite you to register for my free e-course, Joy Plus You Unleashed. It's a fun, self-paced class that guides you through how to focus on making room for more joy in your life. There's a sign-up form right on the homepage of the website, so drop your name in there, put your email address, and you'll be all set. You can also find past episodes all 99 of them, and nearly eight years of blog posts that I've written to help you find more joy in your life, all at jumpstartyourjoy.com. And so now, without further ado, let's just jump into this great interview with Julie Houghton and Liz Applegate. Yay! Oh my gosh, you guys, welcome to episode 100. Today, I have my dear, dear friends, Julie Houghton and Liz Applegate. Welcome back to the show, you guys. Yes. Thanks, Paula. Thank yes. you for us. I am so excited. Clearly, we had to do, I kind of like picture myself being like Kermit the Frog, waving my arms in the air when he goes, yay! <laughs> That's right. That am, I gonna only, be... <laughs> am I the only one that just did that? Like, I think <laughs> just did that. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, well, so for those of you who haven't already listened to episode 41, Julie and Liz and I are a mastermind of epicness, (laughs) and uh, (laughs) three of us met in coach training back in 2015. We were all um, certified coaches together through CLCC uh, in October of 2015, and that is how we met. And now we're this awesome mastermind, and we talk all the time uh, and support each other in all matters, business, entrepreneurial raising kids, whatever comes up, comes up. Um, And so I really wanted to have a special episode 100. And I just really couldn't imagine a more wonderful mix and the more perfect people than these two, because the three of us have really been through this whole crazy journey of business together since the very beginning. So thank you for doing me the honors, ladies. Yes. Thank you, Paula. Such an honor. Yeah. Oh, well, it's all mine. Do you guys want to do a brief intro of yourselves in case people don't know who you are? I can't imagine who those people are, but uh, <laughs> and then we'll jump into the meat of this show, which will be all about where what life has looked like for us as 
uh, kind of, I'm calling early entrepreneurs, like meaning we're still in the early stages. <laughs> mm -hmm. Julie, you want to go first? first? Yeah. Um, I am Julie Houghton. I'm a life and career coach and live in San Francisco. Um, I work mostly with moms. I work with all kinds of people, but I would say m the majority of my clients are moms. And I work with women who like basically want to find more meaningful work, but there's a whole lot that goes into that. Like once they've had kids, um, you know, potentially sort of rediscovering who they are or, and, uh, you know, or maybe they're feel like they're sort of a different person in some ways. Maybe they've lost themselves in some ways since having kids. Um, but basically reconnecting or connecting with who they are and figuring out how they want to shape their lives so that their work and their life feel like the right balance for them. And when they are working, it feels meaningful and worth it, basically. If that makes sense. It does. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's such an important thing, too. Yeah. It is. It's, yeah. I think it can be easy to sort of, well, not easy, but like some, sometimes there's a tendency to kind of like slog through a career that doesn't feel right. And for so many people, once you have kids, like that's, that just doesn't cut it anymore. You know, you, it's a, such a turning point in your life that you're like, you know, what do I truly want? It's a time when you start to question a lot of things or many people do. Yeah. I totally found that to be true as well. Um, yeah, that's kind of where the whole journey started. I mean, not the whole journey, but a lot of the like, no, nope, I'm going after this now because when yeah. else will there be the time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, welcome, dear friend. <laughs> <Thanks, Paula. laughs> yeah. And Ms. Liz Applegate. Uh, yeah. Who are you? What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Liz Applegate. What's interesting, as I was listening to Julie, and so, I mean, we talk all the time, and I know what she does, but what's so interesting is she works with moms as they are becoming moms and, and how that all changes their lives, and not really becoming moms, but, you know, they, are, they have younger kids. So I do, I work with moms later down the road. So I work with moms when their children are um, leaving the nest, and it's another time of... Um, this transformation, there's, um, mm -hmm. they are finding that what they've done all these years have been mostly concentrated on their children, and now this is a time for for them, and they start questioning their career again, and they <laughs> start questioning, you know, what their purpose and what their roles are, and um, so it's just interesting, Julie. I just realized that, like, yeah. you're working with moms on, on one end, and I'm working with moms on another end. Yeah. And it so, is. It's, yeah. It's like, it's, it's really cool because I think these are both huge times of transition and transformation that are so huge that they make you sort of reflect on, like, what is my identity, you know? And your identity can shift during those times. Um, but yeah, it really gets back to something like as core as your identity. Yes. Ooh, I love all that. And it's so interesting because I'll act as part moderator, part participant here, but like, it's so interesting to me seeing like both of those, I don't really think they're bookends because it's not like that's the beginning and end of things, but like part of what I've eased into even over the last couple of years is the space of helping people find their voice and, and both literally, but also figuratively voice it out. And what is their story and what is their message? I mean, I think it's it's like a, kind of sometimes as a result of one of those life change things. So that's kind of interesting to me as well. Mm -hmm. hmm. Coaching in action. That's right. <laughs> and you know, it's interesting too, when you look at all, when you look at the three of us and what we've all gone through in our lives, We've all experienced this, right? Like, mm -hmm. like we we know these places, and so right. we are we are bringing not only our coaching training, but also our life experiences and everything that we've learned along the way, and the connections that we have, and so just a beautiful thing to be able to help mm -hmm. other people experience um, just a transformation and and see the possibilities. 
So totally. I love it. I have goosebumps just saying that. So. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Well, and it's a beautiful segue into kind of the first question that I put out there for all of us to play with a little, which is what's changed or shifted in the last two years? And I, and just for the audience, I say two years, cause that's kind of when the three of us each crossed over into being a certified coach. And so I think that's kind of an easy, I'm using air quotes around beginning, but like what's changed since we hit that threshold, if you will. So I don't know if we can just start playing with that question, but what's changed or shifted in the last couple of years for us. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So much. I know. Oh, I mean, I if feel you like, mind if I jump yeah, go Liz. Ahead. I want to hear what you say. Well, I think that, <clears throat> excuse me. I think that one thing that I wasn't aware of was starting your own business is such a, um, wow. It just brings up a lot of stuff about yourself. Like it, it really like building your business is really building yourself. It's like, uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't have the right words for it, but it's just kind of building your business brings up your issues with money and brings up your issues with confrontation and all these things. And so it's really Mm -hmm. the self growth opportunity that I don't think that I realized, um, like most growth opportunities, right? Like you step into something and it's like, oh, wow, I had no idea. So I think for me, <laughs> um, and it's a good thing we didn't know really. So um, I think that that has been, um, been, been something really that has really brought up for me some some growth opportunities. And so that, that was the first thing that, that came to mind for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that one a lot, Liz. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I feel like for me, it kind of makes me think back to that idea of identity because I feel like when I first started coaching, I looked so I looked so outside of myself, um, and it was it was just an issue of like lack of confidence, basically. Like I was scared that I wasn't doing things right. I really had this idea that there was like a right and wrong way to do things, even though I knew that wasn't true. I was still really like hooked onto that idea of being a good coach and worrying that I wasn't a good coach. And I was, I really looked outside of myself trying to figure out like, how are other coaches doing this? Um, And that, that created so that takes so much energy um, to be kind of second guessing yourself and just looking outside of yourself all the time. So I feel like one thing that has shifted for me in the last two years is I feel just like I've kind of settled into myself more in a way, if that makes sense, mm-hmm. kind of like settled into my identity. Um, and I trust my gut. I don't have to, I have, I feel like I have more of a, I don't know how, like kind of in my soul knowledge that there is not a right and wrong way to do something like, you know, to coach somebody, for example. Um, Mm -hmm. And I can, I can like tap into my gut feeling and trust it. And it's, there's like more ease around it because I am not spending so much energy wondering if I'm doing it right, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. And I really love what you said about the external kind of, is there a right or wrong way to do this? Mm -hmm. Um, Because I think that comes into play when so many of us are tapped into like the academic world, right? Like we've been doing that for so Mm -hmm. long. And then we get over to this other place where it's our own playground. It's our own business all that's gone, right? Like there's, there's nobody like, here's the right way. (laughs) So you're kind of in a new territory. And so all the validation points are different. Um, Totally. And even like the corporate world, like I was in the corporate world for 15 years mm -hmm. before becoming a coach. And you've always got a boss who's telling you if you did it right or wrong, basically, you know, whether that's just purely their opinion. (laughs) Like You've got this like outside person being like, yeah, this is fine. Or no, you need to you know, totally redo this. Um, so yeah, it's like you're, 
I mean, for me, up until becoming a coach, my whole life had been sort of, I mean, not my whole life, but, you know, school, work, there's a huge focus on like, are, do other people think I'm doing a good job? And mm -hmm. am I kind of like checking the boxes that they tell me I need to, you know? So mm -hmm. it's so different. I mean, and, and being a coach is so different from the corporate world. It's just, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's like really being present and trusting your gut and I mean, I could go on and on about all the ways it's different. You guys know, but it's like, it's sort of unsettling at first where you're like, wait a minute, you know, like what, how do I like calibrate here? Like, um, mm -hmm. I mean, when I first started, I felt like I didn't have a sense. I didn't have my footing. I didn't feel grounded. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's that, hard. Too. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Paula. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I see so much in that too. Like, um, it kind of rolls into what I was saying. Like there's a, there's a, a growth opportunity and there's a confidence in, mm -hmm. I think there's a confidence in what you do as for meaningful work, but there's also a confidence in ourselves. Like there's mm -hmm. a, you know, we settle into who we are and we, we've tapped more into what we can bring into the world and our own unique gifts and just, kind of owning that. And so when that all wraps together, how we can just kind of, I don't have, again, I'm like, I'm at a loss for words, but just mm -hmm. kind of just be and be yeah. there for our clients and how important that is. So. Yeah. I think there's also something like when you were talking, Liz, about like what a growth opportunity it is to be an entrepreneur. And I feel like Another way in which I feel sort of more settled and grounded is because I am used to all the ups and downs now. <laughs> like, mm. And we've gone through so much of that together. I mean, it's such part of why I think it's so amazing to have each other because we can be there, you know, for the other person. If we're one of us is in one of the downs, you know, we can see, um, we can see the bigger picture. We can see like what's possible for whoever of us is sort of in the down cycle. <laughs> um, yeah. But, and help each other kind of get back out of it. But I also feel like there is sort of a way in which you kind of relax into this knowledge that being an entrepreneur means you're sort of forever probably going to have these ups and downs. Um, and those feel, those can be an emotional roller coaster when you're first starting, you know? And I feel like mm -hmm. now, like two years later, I'm sort of like, okay, like, this, this is just how it is, you know? Um, you're not going to reach this point where, like, the ups and downs stop necessarily. But yeah. you don't you don't have to read so much into it if it's one of the downs or if it's one of the ups, you know? It's just that's how it is. Yeah, I like that a lot. Because I know for me there was what? I think part of it is that I want to know what to expect. And so I think that ties into that external kind of a validation thing. But, I mean, everything else about the rest of my working life had been there's a path more or less mm -hmm. and I know what to expect. And then there's goals to reach that are attainable. I mean, and the thing about setting up goals as an entrepreneur at least has been, I mean, I could see how much money if we get into that I need to make, but then, <laughs> but then there's not a really clear path on how you get right, to that. Totally. Um, <laughs> right. I mean, I'm glad we're kind of all chuckling about that because I feel like a lot of <laughs> Like business coaches or whatnot will be like, oh, yeah, just figure out how much you need in a month and then see how much you need to make. And you're like, well, that's BS. <laughs> like, how do I bring those people in? Oh, <laughs> so I think, how do I connect uh, those dots? Like, <laughs> Yeah, that's helpful. But um, and so I think it's that like having faith that there will be growth, but yeah. also that kind of faith that it's not going to be exactly what you expected or what you thought it would be totally. in any way. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. I know. I remember, I mean, yeah, when you have these like dry periods when you're like, okay, like now what's, you know, am I going to have more clients? <laughs> like what's happening here? And then in the flip side too, like the month when I had more clients than I've ever had and I was like, whoa, like I felt like I was in some ways I was kind of like, <sighs> I was like, okay, I can do this, but I, I was sort of holding on for like the ride in a way where I was like, okay, this, 
the the good and the bad sometimes feels out of my control, you know, or mm-hmm. it's like I didn't do something so different and now I have more clients than I've ever had before. And at the same time, there are times when I have really not done anything any differently and I, you know, could have space for way more clients. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not like a linear thing between what I do and the state of my business. Mm-hmm. It's so easy to get caught up too in this online world where, you you know, because even though we, we talk with clients, we might even meet clients one-on-one or over the phone. I mean, it's a one-on-one business, but we're still um, kind of really connected in this online space. And then you see people who are like, oh, I made six figures and, you know, whatever, three months, and I just started. <laughs> and mm-hmm. it, can be, it can be really discouraging when you're starting out and then realizing that it's taking a lot more work, that that traje- the trajectory is not, that's not exactly how this is working out. So mm-hmm. um, I've always, let, and I just want to speak into this, it seems totally off topic other than we're talking about you, Julie, but um, that I want to talk about you is how <laughs> you have built your coaching practice and just really been connected like one-on-one and giving workshops and you've been an inspiration for me to kind of look outside that online world. So anyway, I don't know why that just came to my mind, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Good I mean, you, so <laughs> oh, I appreciate that, Liz. I mean, yeah, when I was looking at the questions that you sent over Paula, of like, you know, things to think about for our call tonight and you asked what was most surprising. And I feel like that is actually what's been most surprising for me is that I haven't at least for now, like I haven't really established an online presence mm-hmm. and I've been able to run my business without that. And that'll change, you know, like I, that's partly because just been like a factor of how much time I have since I'm with my kids too. Um, but the truth is I don't really like being, I mean, I don't like social media, so I don't know how much it'll change. Um, right. But that really scared me when I was first starting off because I at that time as well didn't really like social media (laughs) and I was like it was that was like a really big should of like well I should be on all these platforms and um I mean you guys know I'm just barely learning how to use Instagram (laughs) like (laughs) like for my own personal like use um yeah so that was a huge should for me and now I feel like that has actually been like a good surprise in a way of like, you don't have to be online to build a good business, you know, and that mm-hmm. you can do it in a way that feels good to you. To me, it feels way better to give in-person workshops and, you know, connect in that kind of real world space. Um, mm-hmm. than yeah. All this stuff online. And I love what you're introducing here is like this thing for me too, which has been around the shoulds of like, yeah, you should have this web presence and you should put stuff out there in this way or whatever, but really following the line of like, okay, that's great. And I'll try all the things that people say I should do, but then seeing what works and following that through line of like, I mean, for me, like one of the bigger surprises since we're kind of jumping into that discussion was, I mean, I was positioning myself, even if listeners go back at the first, this first season as like, I'm a life coach and a podcaster. If you listen to the intro now, the life coach part has disappeared because I mean, I still coach people, but my, my coaching is more around podcasting. And so following that through like, like, that's probably my biggest surprise is I would have thought two years ago, oh, well in two years, you know, I'll have all these life coach clients and that'll be the bulk of my business when it's been so different. And if I hadn't been flexible enough to say, oh, this is interesting. Let's see where it goes. Then I probably wouldn't be where I, I mean, I wouldn't be where I am today. I could be stuck and frustrated mm-hmm. thinking, oh, I should keep doing all these other things. But instead, I'm in a different place and so excited and feel really lit up about the possibilities of helping other people bring their podcast to life and teaching them about how to find their voice and their message, whether that is in yeah. a podcast or something else. But like, I think letting go of that should is like the key to kind of that first step of how do you then go grab the thing that is right for you instead of the thing that people say you should do? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I to- I feel like it totally builds on like the points that both of you have been making. Like first that ideal list mentioned of like 
just the ways in which this is a journey of personal growth, like you're, you're tuning into like what feels good to you. Like at first you thought it was life coaching and it's evolved, you know, like you're sort of following the thread of what feels good to you, which is the same for me where initially I was like, okay, I got to be on Facebook and just send pictures of myself working in a coffee shop or whatever, <laughs> like living the dream, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> but there's the, there's that growth where you're, you're following the thread of like what resonates for you, what feels good to you. And it also totally ties to that idea that we mentioned of like there, you can't necessarily just lay out these linear goals, you know, because things are going to change in ways you can't anticipate. So you, when you first start out, start out and you're thinking about how you want to grow your business, I mean, of course it's good to think through that, but because it's so tied to who you are and kind of like realizing your own identity as a, you know, entrepreneur and in whatever you do, like you can't just write it all out and it's not going to be this linear thing, like the way that sort of goal type work can show up in the corporate world. I think too, it's been um, recognizing that and realizing that, um, so I'm working through this very thing with my own coach. I have I have a business coach, and and I have really been down on myself because I've kind of flip flopped as far as my you know who I work with. I I thought I was feeling a pull to one direction, and then I was really having a hard time owning you know who I wanted to be as a coach, and which is really kind of funny. And I don't even think I mentioned it when I was introducing myself, but I have my own podcast, Midlife Schmidlife. And it was just kind of stepping fully into that role of, quote, being a midlife coach, which um, we don't need to get into how I feel about that word. But it (laughs) just is um, like recognizing that it's okay to, to try these different things to kind of find your path. Like realizing mm-hmm. that it's not linear, that it is going to be some dips and some zigzags, and and then that's okay. I mean, you're growing as a person and you're growing as a business owner, and, and for us, it's as a coach. But whatever it is that you're doing, even if it's not a business, even if it's setting out to write a book, you know, I mean, there you're just just accepting that that's just part of the process and and Mm -hmm. being okay with it and not, not getting down on yourself, not feeling like you're a failure. Um, that this is an evolution of who we are as people and business owners. And so I just feel like that's really important. Something that's come into play in the last, the last time we were here. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yeah, I feel like it actually relates so much to what I am often coaching my clients around, which is that like you can't think your way to these answers. Like you have to try it. You have to take action and experience what it feels like to work with this type of person or what it feels like to do, you know, X, Y, Z. And then that's going to mean there are that it's not going to be a linear path. Like you're going to try something and see how it feels and then adjust based on that. And, and that's a good thing. Like if you're, if you're just sort of sitting on your couch, thinking your way to what you sort of envision your business being, you know, however many years in the future, you're just in your head about it. And, and maybe the path, you know, you'll write something down that sounds linear, but when you're really living it, just the nature of it is that it's not going to be, you're going to experience something and then adjust based on how that feels. And, just all the rich information you get from living it and experiencing it and adjusting that it might not look linear, but it's so authentic, you know, that you're, you're learning so much along that journey. Yes. Oh, yes. I like that so much because I mean, yeah, I think it, it kind of also goes back to that thing of feeling like in academia. I mean, for me, at least like getting into my head, but out of my head and into my heart has been a huge step. Like a big difference, a big change for me, because Mm -hmm. it's so easy to know what the theory is and what the principles are and like how this should look. 
And then you could chart it out. I mean, it's very similar to what you're saying about money. But then in the end, some of those things might not come to pass or they come and change shape. And then you're looking at a very different vantage point and you realize, oh, well, look, I could try this other thing now because I've learned these things. And you Mm -hmm. just never would have known that starting out. So I love what you've just said. And I would never have guessed it would be that... um, what that all of it would shift all the time the way that it has like no one can yeah. explain that to me the way that it has become a reality totally i feel like there's so much about that like getting to that place where you can like settle in and trust yourself and trust the process you know trust that you'll be able to keep checking in with yourself about what feels right and trusting this process that this there's, there are going to be all these ups and downs and all these kind of zigzags and that's okay. Yes. So true. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, what do you think um, you guys, what have, what has been your biggest growth kind of, if you look back over the last few years, even, and if you want to talk about maybe how it's changed you personally, but what do you think your growth edge has been? Or if you, if you're not clear on that, maybe what is it? What do you think it will be? I think really my biggest, yeah, like when you said that, I think I wanted to have some grand answer here and wanted to have, you know, some awe-inspiring answer. But honestly, I feel my, I feel that that really is an acceptance of who I am and being okay with that. And that comes from being a recovering perfectionist and a recovering just <laughs> anything else, just a, inner, a really large inner critic voice and just um, feeling really getting down on myself for past mistakes and not forgiving myself. And so I really feel that that's really been my biggest growth edge is just really kind of, I I have felt myself and it it really is what we've been discussing all along. It's just settling into, you know, I mean, I, I turned 51 this year and it's kind of like, well, if I, you know, now's the time. I mean, it's, it's like, I, I can't, now's the time to really if I haven't done it yet, like, when am I going to love myself? When am I going to accept myself? And when am I going to see the gifts that I have to offer to other people through my own life experiences? And um, so that really has been my biggest growth edge is just just settling in. And, and that goes into everything. That goes into accepting my, you know, loving my body and loving my looks. And I I am really starting to become, ever since our coach training, so much more in tune to what is going in on with my body. And, you know, I think just being a mom, we just kind of shut that out. I, you know, have my own theories, too, on just being a woman and what that all means and, um, you know, not paying attention to what we are feeling physically. and so just being able to tune in and pay attention and listen to what is going on in certain circumstances and how I'm feeling and just, just all that. That sounds like really totally woo woo, but that's just (laughs) where, where I just really feel like I've, I'm stepping into and really helping my, I'm seeing that my clients are kind of on that same path. So I feel like that's very interesting. Um, I don't know if it's an age thing, but I think just the whole self-care thing too. So all that's really just kind of wrapped up of, of being a self-acceptance and self-growth. And um, that's just really been my biggest growth edge. <laughs> Very well stated. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like just listening to you has helped me get clarity about what my own growth edge is. Because... <laughs> Yeah, I feel the same. I feel like it comes down for me to trusting myself, which I feel like is sort of, that's like a version of what you're saying. Um, Because when I was 
first thinking of what my answer to this question would be, I was thinking that it's like a comfort with ambiguity. Ambiguity is hard for me. And I'm a planner. I like things to be kind of black and white and right versus wrong and all that kind of stuff we've been talking about already. Um, And I feel like when you're running your own business, you know, like we've been saying all along, like you can't, can't predict things, it's not black and white. Um, but it's, even as a coach, I mean, you're on the, you're on a call with a client, you don't know what they're going to say. You know, you can't be ready with kind of your roadmap of like how you're going to help this person in this, this next hour. Um, because you can't predict it. You don't know what's going to come up. So there's a ton of ambiguity, but I, so initially I was like, yeah, I feel like comfort with ambiguity is kind of my growth edge, but really like what's underneath that is trusting myself. And I feel like everything that you said, like, that's, what's really there underneath that for me. Um, trusting myself as a coach, trusting myself in my business. And I think trusting that like the story that I have to tell has the potential to make a difference in someone else's life as well, because so I mean, most of my clients come to me because they've read my story and they can relate in some way. Um, and so there's something there about like kind of valuing your, yourself and what you have to offer. I feel like that has been related to, for me for that whole idea of like trusting myself and trusting that I have something to give. Yes, that's exactly like I think I was going to say trust even after I'd asked the question myself. But I think there's also a deeper trust and faith that comes into play for me, which is, I think for a long time, I was really worried that like, I would end up poor. I don't even really, I couldn't describe (laughs) what that exactly means, but like somehow we would lose the house and everything would go downhill or something if I couldn't provide for a family. And, uh, you know, going out on my own for a year and realizing, hey, even if I don't have the income every week that I thought I would get, uh, I could still I could still provide. And then when it came time to realize like, hmm, maybe I should go back to a job because I haven't been making as much as I thought I needed. Then also having the faith that there would be provisions beyond that as well. Like there was, it was still all going to be okay. And I think I had to live through that year where I was out on my own and had, you know, had to be in the free fall state to see like, hey, I'm still going to be okay. And this is all going to work out in the end. And so I think I needed to live it though, to learn it. I feel like, yeah, it's that same idea of like when you're sitting on your couch thinking about all this stuff, first, these things can feel way more terrifying than they actually are when you're living it. And then when you live it, when you experience it, like so much wisdom comes out of it, you know, and so much like trust in yourself and confidence in yourself that you can do it and get to the other side and learn from this experience. We raise our hands if we if we are overthinkers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My hands up, overthinker. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and there's so much, like you just said, Julia. There's so much wisdom, and it's in the doing. The growth is in the doing. The growth mm-hmm. is not in the thinking. Mm-mm. Thinking really is the safe spot, really, when you think about it. Totally. Well, when you think about it, but yeah, when you overthink <laughs> about it, <laughs> um, that's that's the safety, like we can feel like we're doing something when we're ruminating and thinking and yeah. planning, but we're not doing anything. It's, that's, there's safety in that. And there's totally, you know, that's where growth edge is right there is taking the action, getting out of your mm-hmm. head. Totally. I feel like nothing will keep you more stuck than just like sitting there and thinking about something right. on and on and on. I feel like I did that for like 15 years. <laughs> like, <laughs> I did that for a lot more than 15 years. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, And it's interesting how it's so easy to get into that space. But right until we've gotten back into the space of action, it's I don't know, it feels like you can even get yourself more and more stuck the more you think about it. Totally. Yeah. (laughs) The more you think, the more scared you become, you know, like Mm -hmm. the thinking and fear seem like they go so hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Overthinking and fear. Yes. I think it is a, a way that fear shows up. I think that is mm-hmm. very much a, a mechanism where fear is showing up. And, and so we like to think that we're doing something productive, but really fear is running the show here because there's totally. some chatter going on and, you know, in the back of our 
heads that is saying, okay, well, you're not ready yet. You're not, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is, you're not ready yet. You're not, um, you know, I mean, the list could go on and on. These are all the bad things that could happen if you Mm -hmm. do this. So let's sit there and think and plan and, yeah. Right. Yeah, plan all the, what would you do if all these bad things happened and totally. Well, and what I'm thinking right now, too, is that like one of the really cool things about having a mastermind and people that you trust so well is that if I come to you guys with one of these overthinking and the fear trains taken off, you guys are very good about gently reminding me of like, hey, well, what about you can pull me out of that? And I think a good mastermind Mm -hmm. is excellent at that because you've got real life people in a similar situation as you are. To say, hey, but what about this piece? <laughs> like, it sounds like you're all in your head about this. <laughs> and totally. So I think that's been a really amazing reason. Um, it's hard to feel really alone when there's other people in it with you and who have your back. And like you guys have said, like can see you as your best self, your highest self, and remind you of that person from time to time. Mm-hmm. And who believe in you, you know, who mm-hmm. there's no inner critic, you know, they they believe in what's possible for you. Yes. And they aren't having, well, go ahead, Liz. (laughs) No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, they're not having the inner critic, like inner critic can show up. The inner critic is absent, (laughs) right? Yeah, totally. And if it shows up, (laughs) he's going to, he or she will have three people to talk to about. (laughs) Then we can get all coachy on each other. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) And I think, and I think it's such what I was going to say was, there's such a difference in, okay, so so the three of us are friends by far. We're, we're friends. But also in this mastermind um, phase, we're, we bring some honesty. We're not, you know, mm. friends are usually like, oh, I'm so mm. sorry. You know, like, yeah, right. that's tough. And there are times when we, when we do that. But we also know when it's time to say, okay, like I, I really love when I, I will lay something out and then someone will, so we use this app called Voxer, which is just like an awesome thing because we can talk to one another all day long <laughs> if we need to. <laughs> and so I'll, I'll leave this box and then I'll, I'll see, oh, wow, Julie left me a box and Paula left me a box. And so I'm listening and then it's kind of like, oh, wow. They've just called me out on all this <laughs> stuff that my inner critic just dumped out in front of them instead of being all like, oh, we're just going to sweep this under the rug and act like we didn't hear this. They're going to say, yeah. hey, I'm noticing that this is, <laughs> you know, is this really true, Liz? And so I just love that, you know, not only it's a supportive friendship, but it's also supportive of being real, of being, mm-hmm. being our our higher selves and and kind of elevating us to that when we need it. And that means looking at our stuff sometimes, a lot of times, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah. definitely that is very helpful. And and that I think that that's I don't want to say it's un- I, I I think that when people get into a mastermind situation that that's something they need to consider. Like Mm-hmm. Are they just there to um, just kind of gloss over the things, or are they really right. holding one another? It's not just about being like a cheerleader. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like that's part of it, but there's also being really honest and yeah, challenging each other with love. With love, yeah, yeah. definitely. Honest. Yeah. The the other thing, too, is it, uh, there's a word here, there's a nuance here that I think I never understood until we had each other. But was like, there's the accountability buddies, which is like, that just slays me. Like, I don't want somebody up in my business about, like, did you do that thing? You said you're going to do that by Friday. Like, no. Oh, gosh, get out of here. But they're holding me accountable to my higher self and, like, calling it yeah. out if it seems like I'm out of integrity. That's mm-hmm. a different playing field. So, totally. and I think that's what we have that's so different about places that weren't a match for me in, in the past, which is like, you guys honor who you see I am, but you also will remind me who of who I am when I forget. And it's not just mm-hmm. about 
hey, you're gonna uh, you're gonna update your about me page, aren't you? Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. Right. Like, yeah, like, you can call me out. I'm supposed to, but like, that's not really what this group is about so much. And yeah. I think that's why it's magic. But I think it's too. I mean, could be because accountability. I think is good too. I know that I've come to you all and said, okay, I'm going to do this this week. <laughs> And sometimes I don't follow through. And um, I think just knowing that I've stated that I've shared that with you all helps me to to want to do it. So sometimes I do need the accountability. So I feel like it's, and I feel like some people do work very well with that. And so just kind of knowing who you are and if you are thinking about starting a mastermind of what it is you want to bring into the space, that that's really important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I feel like we have a way in which just our our sort of presence in each other's lives as part of this mastermind, like we allow each other to hold ourselves accountable in a lot of ways, you know? So it's not like we're beating down your door, apologizing, like, did you write your about me page? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll get on it. <laughs> like, the, presence, the presence of this group and the support that we have for each other, like it, it sort of allows us to hold ourselves accountable. I mean, we're there to like call each other out for sure. Um, mm-hmm. But just knowing we have each other, be just bringing something into this space and being like, this is what I want for myself and my business, however big or small that is. Mm-hmm. Um, we are kind of holding ourselves accountable in a lot of ways. Yes. Yeah, I think that's space. true. Yeah. It is I a safe I, space. I know I shared something with you last week about, you know, where I see and how I eventually want to grow. And I don't think I've ever voiced that out loud. So Mm -hmm. it was a very tender place to just be able to share. And yeah, um, it really held some reality to me when I was able to to voice that. So um, yeah, it's just, and knowing that you all know that now I know you're going to elevate me to that. Like it's, it's going to be like this place where if I'm falling out of integrity to where I want to go, then it's not, it's, I mean, I feel it always with love, but it's always going to be, you know, Hey, I thought this, mm-hmm. this is what you wanted, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's, and I feel like just the fact that we have each other, like we're less likely to fall out of integrity because we're there kind of witnessing each other, you know? Right. Yeah, and there's something about speaking the intentions and the hopes and the dreams and all of that out loud and then having yeah. two other people always hear it. Um, right. Yeah, there's something about it that then makes it more likely that it will become a truth just because we've had this safe space to share it with each other. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. There's something magical about it um, for sure. And I know I'm just so, I just, I, I love going back to the moment where Julie, you said out loud, you're like, if you really knew me, <laughs> you know that I really want the three of us to be a mastermind together. I know. And I mean, like, <laughs> that was like the sweetest <laughs> Most vulnerable moment ever. And everyone's like, yes! <laughs> I know. I mean, I really want to say, like, if there's anyone out there listening who has, like, hopes and dreams of having a mastermind as amazing as ours and feels worried that it'll never happen, that it can. Because I was that person. Like, when I started my business, I felt really isolated, Mm-hmm. You know, because I had started coaching a year before doing the training, because I'd done this other training. So I had a good solid year where I felt super isolated. And I felt like, especially in the coaching world, you see all these other coaches who seem to all be best friends with each other. And it, it can just make you feel that much more alone. Um, and I had had other masterminds that just fell flat and it it didn't work. And I mean, so first I want to say, if there's anybody out there who's like, oh, I will never have anything like that, that it, I was that person. I mean, I am a warrior, so I I had that fear. Um, but it, then at the same time, I am totally the kind of person who, if I want to be somebody's friend, I'll just lay it out there and be like, 
do you want to be my friend? <laughs> and I feel like that was sort of how this group came together too. <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to lay it out there. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, and we're so glad that you did. And I think that totally was, glad. really like it is such a simple thing, but such a, a vulnerable thing too for you to do. And yeah, I know that. I know that Paula and I are very, very grateful for that, <laughs> for you showing up that way. Yeah. Well, and it's almost like that, that moment is like kind of, dare I say, the entrepreneurial journey and like a, in a little microcosm again and again and again, mm. which is like putting yourself yeah. out there, saying what totally. you want, hoping you'll get it and then seeing yeah. what happens. Like, totally. Oh, gives me goosebumps. <laughs> oh. And it, and you're so right that it's it's lonely starting your own business or starting it is. whatever, you know, whatever it is that you want to do, you can feel very, you know, this new venture or new, uh, you know, this new path forward, this new life mm-hmm. you want to build. I mean, it can feel very lonely and just aligning yourself and finding people who want to join you in that. I I feel yeah. I feel like there's so much more of that available, but we feel kind of awkward or we feel, you know, kind of like this is a precious part of us that we're not ready to share with others. But I just feel that that connection, I think more now than ever is so important and it it's, it's there it's, and it may even surprise you as to how close that is around you. And it just takes... Mm-hmm vulnerable and and uh, reaching out and really finding like a group that you can be a part of to yeah. support you in that journey. Yeah, and like not giving up. Like if it doesn't work the first time, it doesn't mean it's never going to happen, you know? Right. Um, but yeah, I think it's so valuable to have something like a mastermind because when you are starting a business or starting something new, like you can't necessarily turn to your friends and family, you know, like they're they're often going to get triggered by whatever's going on with you. There are going to be these ups and downs, you know, so the people who you might t- turn to for support in other parts of your life might not be able to support you in the way that you really need them to. And they might not really totally get it either, you know, if they haven't started a business themselves, like it's, it's a unique experience. Um, but they can get totally triggered and not be able to, be, be there for you the way a mastermind can. That's a really good point. Because, um, I, I mean, my family is supportive, but there, you know, there's not a lot of a path that is understood about, like, why would you start <laughs> your own thing when you, you have this career path that's serving you well? And, like, mm-hmm. like, why would you go out on your own? That doesn't make any sense. So, right. Right. whereas they love and support me, they don't have any comprehension of what it's like to be in that space. Mm-hmm. So, um, it's a different kind of support that you can find with people who are in it at the same, kind of at the same level, too, I think is really important. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Mm. Mm, this is such a good conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm so grateful for you guys. <laughs> Likewise. Um, well, do you guys want to tell a little bit where people can find you if they're like, yes, I want to work with Julie and Liz. <laughs> um, and then we were, we'll jump into the last question, which I've changed up a little bit. Um, but Julie, how about you go first? Sure. Um, you can find me online. I, I am not um, not just available in person, even though I keep talking about my lack of online presence. I do have a website, <laughs> which is www.juliehouten, J-U-L-I-E-H-O-U-G-H-T-O-N.com. Um, and I offer free consultations for anybody who would like to talk to see if it's a good fit, see if I um, tell me more about what's going on for you and how I might be able to help. I'm not always happy to do a free consultation. And Liz, where can people find you? So you can find me online at elizabethapplegate.com. And also my um, podcast is Midlife Schmidlife, which you can find me on iTunes and all the other, all the other podcast places. 
Um, and I also have free consultations. Actually, I'm going through some rebranding, so I have a free 90-minute hello session that's available right now. So you can jump on the call, and I can help you with some life transition and some empowerment coaching on um, just just getting to the next level and rewriting the next chapter of your life. Yay! And both these both these ladies are amazing. I can vouch for it. <laughs> I talk to them all the time. They're wonderful. Um, so go check them out. Um, and let's jump into our last question. Um, I think this one's going to be super interesting, and maybe we could even do a couple versions of it. But what if you, what would you tell yourself of like two or three years ago? Um, if they were, you know, kind of on that threshold of like, hey, I'm about to start out on this new journey. What do you think that Julie and that Liz of two and three years ago needed to hear from from you or from a mentor or a wise soul that they might run into? I feel like for sure I would tell myself to relax because <laughs> I was kind of a ball of stress. Um, yeah, I would relax was what popped into my head immediately when you asked um, what would I want to tell myself and I feel like in that it would also be to like try to bring some fun into this process Um, I feel like I was so tightly wound like I said before I was trying so hard to get everything right and that actually made it harder for me to tap into my intuition um, because I was just so in my head about everything And so I feel like, yeah, I would tell myself to relax and to like find some joy in this, you know, like I left the corporate world to do something more meaningful, to help people to feel like I was making a difference and, you know, to to be able to tap into the the joy of that and the the fun of that and, and just to have gratitude for what I was doing, because I think I was... I was doing it, but I was still really scared. Um, And that was kind of going back to what we were talking about with the overthinking being the way that fear shows up. Like I was really in my head trying to do everything right. Um, I have this image of myself just, yeah, tightly wound. It's it's the Mm -hmm. word that comes to mind. (laughs) And what about you, Liz? The first thing that came to my mind, um, with a little bit of the backstory is that through my 40s was just such a turnover of transitions and new changes. And uh, <laughs> seriously, it wore me out between 40 and 50. I had so many changes. Um, and in that, in all a lot of those changes, I had some friendships that I had counted on that were no longer. And um, so the first thing that you said when you asked that or when you asked that question, the first thing that popped into my mind was that I could and I should um, trust friendships again. Mm-hmm. And that was something that really hit me very hard was losing the friendships that I had counted on. And so that was the first thing was just thinking of the three of us and how much I have shared and how much I have grown through through our friendship, you know, and our mastermind, but just of, of us being together. And not only us, but also just the other connections that I've made through our trainings and just the growth that I've had in just trusting, just trusting that. And so that was the first thing that popped mm. into my mind with that. Um, mm. I love it. Thank you, ladies, for that. I just wanted to add that, too. So. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I think to answer the question myself as well, I I think there's just kind of like both what you both of what you've said is something about just go see is kind of the phrase that pops into my head, which is like. Um both around just go experience what the whole thing is, try and let go of what the expectations are. 
but also just leave yourself open because you're not going to be able to ever comprehend what's about to happen. Um, so just soak it up as you go. <laughs> mm. And uh, uh, yeah, I think that's what Paula of three years ago needed to hear. <laughs> And she wouldn't have listened, but <laughs> right, totally. Same here. I wouldn't have listened. <laughs> or I would have tried to figure out the right way to relax. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thanks you guys so much. This has just been the yeah. sweetest, most wonderful one hundredth episode ever. Yay. It was so fun, uh, Paula. Julie and Liz, thank you so much for joining me this week and for all of your love and support, your humor, your great coaching over the last two years. I've just adored getting to know both of you, getting to be mentor coaches together, and it just felt so right to have you both here on the show for episode 100. There is really no one that I would rather have spent this episode with, and thank you so much for being on the show again. If you guys really love this discussion, as I mentioned in the show, Julie and Liz were both on, all three of us together, in episode 41, if you want to go back to listen to that. If you want to learn more about Julie and Liz, you can find links to their website at my website, and you can find out how to follow them or get in touch with them about those free consultations they mentioned. You really could not find two better coaches if you're interested and the links you can find them at jumpstartyourjoy.com slash episode 100. And of course, while you're there, be sure and check out the Joy Plus You course on the website. Next week on the podcast is the season two finale. Oh my goodness, I can't even believe it's time for that. The past few weeks have been so monumental with celebrating two years of podcasting, now episode 100, and then closing out season two. To celebrate the show, I decided I'll be having a round table with some of my past guests. We're gonna talk about joy, how we can all follow joy in weird and confusing times, such as the ones we are in, and what inspires them as they are out in the world inspiring, helping, and encouraging others. Some really wonderful, amazing people, and I just can't wait to share this conversation. You can totally soak up the new wisdom that these wise women will be laying down as part of episode 101. So come back next week for that discussion. And until then, I hope that your days are filled with so much joy.